we might have, uh, this has been all over the place, uh, so particularly in social media, uh, but yesterday, as you probably know, uh, three major university presidents appeared before Congress, uh, Harvard, Penn, and MIT. Uh, all three uh, appeared in front of uh, one of the, uh, the House committees, Committee on Education and the Workplace, uh, and uh, uh, you know to talk about to talk about the state of uh, of the workplace of the state of education at Harvard, MIT, and Penn, three of of the premier universities uh, in the country, really in the world. If you look at uh, global rankings, at the same time, uh, you know I think some Republicans uh, brought out some. Um, uh, Students at these three universities, at MIT, uh, uh, Harvard, and, uh, and Penn, had them uh, describe, uh, Jewish students, and had them describe what is going on on campus. If you haven't seen those videos, I highly recommend watching them. They're, they're truly horrifying and, and, and very disturbing. Uh, it, it is quite evident that there is massive amount of anti-Semitism, there is intimidation, uh, Jewish students on campuses uh, are, are afraid. Um, they uh, they are uh, harassed, and, uh, and and some of them are just just terrified for their lives. I, I, I suspect that is also true of faculty, although we we didn't get uh, we did get into that. It, but certainly, uh, this was the case when it came to uh, when it comes to students. The testimony of the girl from MIT and the girl from Harvard were really, really spooky. I mean, the, the, they could have been testifying about uh, 1930s Germany. Um, and, and this is, uh, this is uh, uh, of course, 21st century. Massachusetts, liberal Massachusetts, Harvard, MIT, MIT, a, a bastion of, of science and technology, not even a bastion of the humanities. So I highly recommend you listen, uh, you, you watch them. I think each is about three minutes long. It's definitely worth uh, uh, catching up on. Uh, and, and, uh, and just to, yeah. It, it could also be, you know, and, and maybe, maybe this is the better analogy. It could also be the South. It could be the South uh, in the 1950s and 60s, maybe when the first black students arrived on certain campuses and were harassed, uh, it, 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 truly unbelievable. And it's not just that these are Muslim students, uh, many of them are, but it's not just Muslim students. Many of the students doing the harassing are American, born and bred. At two of the most prestigious universities in the world. Anyway, the presidents of the universities were brought in front of Congress, in front of the Committee on Education and Workplace, to discuss this and, and uh, to answer questions about this. That, too, is available on video on social media, and I encourage you to watch it, because that, too, is mind-boggling and just unbelievable. They were asked whether the calls for... Um, the basically, uh, uh, it, it, you know, killing of Jews uh, violated their um, harassment policies. All of them wouldn't answer. I mean, all three basically said, well, it depends on context. If speech becomes action, then it violates. Which is really interesting, right? Now, if these universities took the position of we are you know, basically at these universities abiding by the First Amendment of the Constitution, we will uh, use the First Amendment as a guide to determine free speech issues, issues at the university, and um, that will be the principle by which we... They don't have to because... These are uh, private universities. They could determine their own speech codes. But if they took the position that the First Amendment is our guide, then I get it. Okay, so you can shout and yell 
as long as it doesn't count as incitement, when does calling for the annihilation of another country, uh, a people, count as incitement, and when is it just expression of speech? Okay, you know, you can quibble about that. And indeed, uh, Jonathan Haidt writes, Jonathan Haidt, the, 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 the professor and a big, big proponent of free speech, he says, quote, as a professor who favors free, free speech on campus, I can sympathize with the nuanced answers given by university presidents yesterday about whether calls to attack or wipe out Israel violate campus speech policies. <laughs> but, he says, what offends me is that since 2015, universities have been so quick to punish microaggressions. By the way, microaggressions, it, 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 Telling people we want to kill Jews or we want to annihilate Israel is not exactly a microaggression <laughs> of, in, the, in the context of the kind of speech we're talking about. Anyway, have been so quick to punish microaggressions, including statements intended to be kind. If even one person from a favored group took offense, the presidents are now saying Jews are not a favored group. So offending or threatening Jews is not so bad. For Jews, it all depends on context. We might call this double standard, Haidt continues, institutional anti-Semitism. University presidents, if you're not going to punish students for calling for the elimination of Israel and Israelis, it's okay with me but only if you also immediately dismantle the speech policing apparatus and norms you created in 2015, 2016 in particular. You know, we're talking about universities, uh, Harvard, for example, where the university uh, diversity administration threw a fit when Carolyn Hooven, an evolutionary biologist, at Harvard, stated on Fox News that there were only two sexes. The firestorm that this caused, the claim that there were only two sexes, um, it caused her to have to take a leave of absence. Gay, the president of Harvard University, was asked about this versus calling for violence against Jews. That's okay. But saying there were only two sexes, not okay. How do you square this with this idea of free speech? Uh, the president of Harvard was asked this at the hearing yesterday, but she did not answer. Uh, over and over again, uh, for example, at, at University of Pennsylvania, attempt to punish Amy Wax, a tenured law professor who I really don't like, who I think is indeed a racist, uh, but uh, attempt to, attempt to um, uh, you know, uh, 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 she was, in spite, uh, she was um, uh, critical of diversity programs, and as a consequence, the university tried to sanction her. Right? It's okay to argue for the destruction of the state of Israel. It's okay to call for global intifada against Jews. We know exactly what intifada means. It's just not okay to criticize diversity programs. Or Huda, I can't pronounce her second name, a, a professor of Arabic literature who told Jews, go back to fucking Berlin. Or Ahmad Almaya, a creative writing instructor who led chants of intifada revolution. They are fine. No problem. Calling for the genocide of Jews depends on context. It's uh, unbelievable uh, the extent of intimidation that exists on these campuses that the administration is completely, both administrations of all schools are turning a complete blind eye to the intimidation, the harassment, the real physical harassment that these universities are doing nothing about. Students who are afraid to go out of their dorms 
because they happen to be Israeli or they happen to be Jewish. But how many times have these universities silenced professors? How many times have these universities shut down speakers, disinvited speakers for challenging, I don't know, something like the, the, the common claims about climate change, as MIT did. When asked about whether it would be okay for groups of students to be out there chanting, uh, uh, reimpose slavery, blacks should be slaves, or um, you know, all uh, gays should be executed, stoned to death. Whether that was not equivalent to the calling of genocide around Jewish people, university presidents had no, literally no answer. Evaded the questions, ignored them, or just didn't answer. But we all know that if you call for the murder of gays, or if you call for the murder of blacks, if you call for murder of some minority, you would be thrown out of the university. As a student, as a faculty member, you wouldn't have survived. If there was a march through Harvard of students pro the KKK, they would have all been expelled. And I'm, I'm not saying Harvard shouldn't do that. Harvard should set its policies the way it wants to, but it, it, it seems right that you don't want KKK members at your university. I would expel them. And yet, the equivalent celebrating Hamas rape, pillage, murder, torture, that is fine. That is fine. And of course, this goes to the ideology I've talked about a lot on my show and this idea that the left has that if you're a victim, if you're meek, if you're poor, if you're the oppressed, you can do anything. No standards apply to you. You can literally do anything. If you're the strong, if you are, uh, quote, privileged, if you are white-skinned, if you are wealthy, if you come from a civilized society, if you come from a successful culture, you must just stay quiet if you're going to be abused. The abuse is on you, is, 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 you just need to keep quiet. You just need to turn the other cheek. So gays must be protected because they're weak, oppressed, blacks, minorities, except Jews, must be protected because they're weak, oppressed. Jews, oh, we can't protect Jews. They're strong, they're typically upper middle class and wealthy. They have a whole country that's kind of civilized and successful and relatively rich. So, oh yeah, we can abuse them. They don't need protection. Abuse all you want. This is the morality of intersectionality, the morality of woke, the morality that exists today. If you're white, if you're Jewish, if you're successful, you get no protection. There's no prote equal protection before the law, no equal protection in morality. There's no equal treatment. Your treatment is determined by the group that you belong to and how oppressed it has been. How oppressed it has been. All right, so I'm going to make a request of all of you. I mean, I've made this request for years now. I don't know if anybody takes me seriously or not. But here's the request. It's a serious request. Stop funding the universities. Stop it. Your alma mater calls. Tell them, no, I'm not supporting my enemies. I'm not supporting the destroyers of Western civilization. I'm not support, supporting an ideology that now is through and through throughout the university. From the administration to the professors to the students, I will not support an ideology that's anti-American, that's anti the principles of this country, and that is fundamentally 
racist. So stop supporting your alma mater, particularly if you have money. But all of you, don't even send them five bucks. And I know some of you support your alma mater because you want your kids to go there or you want your grandkids to go there. Stop. It's not good for your kids to go there. These are, have become destructive institutions. Now, there might be better institutions out there. Find the universities that are better. Support them. Send your kids there. But these institutions, Harvard, MIT, uh, uh, um, Penn, and uh, you know, I've, I've, I've mentioned in the past USC, who treat students the way these institutions do, treat, in this case, Jewish students the way they do, treat the faculty the way that they do. I, I, I told you the story about the a university professor at USC that got dis basically put on leave because he argued with the Hamas, pro-Hamas students. Yeah, I mean, these universities have, to ha they either change their behavior or they should not get us support. Don't send your kids there. And by the way, what would really be effective, particularly if you're alum, send them letters. Let them know how you feel particularly if you've given them money in the past. Now, I know a lot of people have stopped. Not enough have stopped. Starve these universities. Starve them. They've been living off of you. They have been your enemy for decades. Now, it's just gone over the top. But this has been going on for a long time. By the way, Douglas Murray asked ChatGPT, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate the university's code of conduct? ChatGPT answered, advocating for genocide violates Harvard University's policies against hate speech and harassment, which are outlined in their code of conduct. They prioritize creating a safe and inclusive environment for all members of the community. There you go. Maybe we should replace the president of Harvard with ChatGPT because ChatGPT knows and understands the actual policies the, the university itself has adopted better than the president of the university. Disgrace, all three presidents based on their performance yesterday should be immediately fired. The boards of trustees should invoke this. And by the way, the boards of trustees, you should resign if you can't fire the president, or if you're in the minority and the others don't want to fire the president, there should be massive protests. Faculty members, leave Harvard, leave MIT, leave these universities. You, you, many of you have got tenure, you're very successful, you can find jobs elsewhere. These universities need to be boycotted by everybody, everybody. 